So you either produce wonder kids or rob someone blind. How do you develop them the best way you can? On today's show, I focus on training those future superstars. My name is Daljit. Welcome to Bustinet. Once again, if you have questions or wish to take part in a deeper discussion, you can always find me on Twitch. Let's define who these young players are. These are any visible players in your squad between the ages of 16 and 23. This is a time when most players show development spurts in the game. Next, you need to understand them. No two players will develop the same way. Assuming you have the best facilities and coaches, the first thing you need to do is to take note of a player's personality. How well he adapts to training depends on determination, professionalism and ambition. Naturally, a player with good attributes in these areas is more likely to show spikes in development. Where can you find this information? The coach report gives some clue and so does a player's media handling style. This information will tell us who to track and who to focus on. You won't be able to treat every young player in your club equally, so you need to make a decision early on on which players to focus on. And I strongly recommend choosing players who can fit into your style of play. There is no point in focusing on a young wide midfielder in a 4-4-2 if your senior team is using a 4-3-3 without any wingers. The goal is to make sure that these young players can be rotated into the first team to experience what match days can be like. This will aid their development. To do this, I normally only pick players who can play in those positions and who can probably do the job because their attributes say so. They may not be as good as the best players in the club, but I can bring them on when we are a few goals ahead or even rotate them for senior players in meaningless matches. You want to identify no more than two players who can appear for 10 to 15 matches a season between 10 to 45 minutes a game. There is no need to play them for the full duration. In fact, you never want to overplay them. And I will do this till they are at least 22. The reason is simple. By not overplaying them, you are not risking fatigue. A young player sometimes needs time away from the pitch so that he can hone his skills on the training ground. To reiterate, you pick the best, you rotate them for between 10 to 15 games a season, ensuring that their match ratings are never too low by playing them in matches you have a good chance in winning. When they aren't playing, make them available for the youth teams. Again, you need to ensure that they aren't being overplayed, so make them available for not more than 60 minutes. You also want to mentor these players. Personality mentoring is important, so stick them to the right attacking or defensive unit. When a player hits 18, match time becomes important, so make sure you start rotating them and giving them more time on the pitch. By now, you should have a good idea which player is good enough to be in the first team. Again, while they are in the first team, ensure they are being rotated. My favourite strategy is to bring them on as substitutes in the second half. What about players who aren't good enough? Loan them out when they are 18 and to clubs with good facilities. Just don't loan them to sites who are in a relegation dogfight. It's better to send them to a good club with good facilities where they are even a squad player. Keep track of them to make sure they get enough game time and speak to the manager if he's not playing them at all. What about training programs for these young players? There'll be two groups, those training with the first team and the rest. Naturally, I'll only focus on the superstar Nugents. An easy approach is to leave youth training to the assistant manager while you're focusing on the superstar Nugents. Make sure you identify the attributes that need strengthening and use additional focus. I sometimes leave a player on additional focus for up to two seasons. As a manager, only you can tell how far his attributes are meeting the requirements to play in your system. For those of you who are in doubt about which additional focus training to choose, physical attributes tend to develop naturally over time. What you really want to be focused on are mental attributes. These are going to be attributes that are really important to any style of play. As far as team trainings go, do not get fixated on having to adapt your main squad's training to incorporate the future superstars. Just use a balanced training schedule and train the player in the position and role you want to use them for. Finally, don't get fixated with the need to extract maximum value from each superstar Nugent in your club. It's best to focus on only those players you can manage to include into your matchday squad. With these players, a focused individualized training program, mentoring and proper management of game time will lead to nice development. I hope you found this guide on developing superstar Nugents helpful. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. You can always look me up on Twitter at Busternet or addicted to fm.com my website. Once again, don't forget to catch me on Twitch. I stream almost five times a week. I'm sure we'll catch up there very, very soon. You guys take care. Have a good one. Stay safe and healthy. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.
Boy, it's called 7.4. It's a liberal.